Yeah, I mean, it's always good to be the standard, right? You want to be the standard on charging. Um, it may not necessarily be a big financial windfall for Tesla, but what it does do is show that their platform is the kind of winning platform. And connecting back to what we are talking about earlier about autonomy, this allows them, we think, to license software to other OEMs, including the Chinese OEMs. Uh, there's not that many players that are doing autonomy software. Look at FSD, how many miles are on the road, how much data they have, the advantage they right. have. So we look at charging as a way to kind of Trojan horse in the door and okay. sell FSD and software. And we're looking at like 2040, 2035 and discounting it back. The, 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 the opportunity is so massive for these things that we think this is enough to carry the story for this stock for several years to come. In this video, still can't quite get over it. The first analyst on Wall Street to really start to wake up the multi-trillion dollar opportunity the Tesla has already won. He's years late to the party, but also apparently seems to be years ahead of his peers on Wall Street. And as most of you guys and girls will know, I'm a big fan of transparency. I've just posted a Twitter subscriber only video showing exactly how much money I got paid by Twitter for my first month from Twitter subscriptions. Plus, I also share how this compares to my current earnings on YouTube and on Patreon. If you're not a subscriber on Twitter, check out the link in the pinned comment and enjoy the video. Bank of America and Phil, they may be laying out a bear case for Tesla, but you're actually, you're taking the other side of that trade. Give us your sense of your rating and your price target for Tesla. Yeah, sure. We have a $305 uh, price target for Tesla. Uh, and we actually raised it significantly from 212 because now we're starting to model autonomy and the impact of robotaxi and FSD software licensing, which we think is going to really be the story. They're trying to get as many Teslas on the road because they want to push autonomy. As I said a few videos ago, this is an important shift in the mindset on Wall Street. The first of many analysts now really starting to consider the implications of autonomy, not just for Tesla, but also other companies who eventually will need to license technology from Tesla. Many of them may have started to figure this out already, although they're not going to say it publicly, but it's inevitable. In the future, other automotive manufacturers will license FSD from Tesla. Elon has said out loud, we're open to doing this. And spoiler alert, Tesla has an unassailable lead in terms of the data. They will have the safest and most capable technology, at least outside of China, for years to come, if not the entire decade and beyond. I just want to make sure that everyone's clear. This will happen. I have zero doubt. Of course, there are some point dexters who argue, well, that's not, you can't possibly know that, not with 100% certainty. And that's true. I don't know, but I'm telling you it is going to happen just so when it does happen, I can clip this video and go, well, I was pretty confident. And here we fucking are again, still batting a thousand bitches. Now, an important comment there. We just heard from Tom. Tesla wants vehicles on roads. This is something that a lot of people seem to have forgotten recently. Elon's made this point quite clear on recent earnings calls. Even if Tesla was selling vehicles at no profit, 0% margin, in the future, they will reap insane profits as a result of autonomy. It's not to say that Tesla plans on selling vehicles at 0% profit margin, but the point is the future profits from autonomy, almost pure profit software margin, utterly dwarf anything Tesla could make selling the hardware, the vehicles themselves. And every additional vehicle Tesla puts on roads is not only a future money printer. When autonomy is enabled, people subscribe to this per month. And then, of course, the robot taxis themselves can drive people from point A to point B, and Tesla takes a cut of those fares as well. Remember, there's the autonomy subscription per month, and then there's robot taxi fares per mile. Tesla's getting a cut of both. But these vehicles today accelerate Tesla's data flywheel. More vehicles on roads, more edge cases collected, more data to train the neural networks to improve the capabilities, aka the safety of FSD, to further extend their already unassailable lead. Every action Tesla takes should be seen through this lens. It is in Tesla's best interest to make as many vehicles as they can and sell them all as fast as they can to get them on roads so they can collect more data and ultimately in the future, enable autonomy, awaken the robot taxis and print ludicrous, unprecedented amounts of money. It's kind of funny. Tesla margins a little bit below expectation. Wall Street panic. Sell Tesla stock. Everyone seems to forget autonomy is around the corner or they just don't believe it is, which fair enough. It's later than I expected. It's later than Tesla expected, but it's going to happen. And the timing isn't so much when does Tesla get there? It's how long until anyone else has any software that's even close to as capable, aka safe, as Tesla's FSD. And spoiler alert, years. Like ARK Invest, I believe this is a winner takes most market. I cannot see second place. I mean, please let me know in the comments below who's in second place in terms of solving generalized autonomy. I don't even know. That's how far behind they are. I, I just literally don't even know. 
Everyone else appears to be on the starting blocks. They're running backwards. They're not even at the starting blocks now because they're pursuing dead ends. HD pre-mapping, LiDAR, not scalable, not generalized, not going to end well. Tom may be the first analyst on Wall Street who's starting to see the forest, not the trees. Uh, in fact, for robo-taxis is 70% of our valuation now uh, for, te for Tesla. So we really think autonomy is the big push and that's what's driving our higher price target. Okay, but autonomy is honestly just a, a little bit away. It's going to be a while before we get to full autonomous vehicles anywhere in the world, especially here in the United States, a lot of regulation. Um, I want to talk to you a little bit more about what Phil was talking about, these Chinese EV makers coming into Europe. So let's just say they continue to see sust sustained success there in Europe. What does it mean for the U.S. auto market? What big player here in the United States may potentially face the biggest negative impact if they are able to succeed in Europe and also cross over here to the U.S.? Sure. And I want to push back a little, actually, on, on the Europe analogy. I was actually the, the European analyst for RBC for four years before now being global and lived in Europe. And I can tell you, Europe loves their national champions. If you go to Italy, what do you see? Fiat. You go to Germany, you see Volkswagen. You go to France, you see Renaults and Peugeot. There's a reason for it. The, the Europeans tend to buy their own products. They're locally produced. They're expensive to make because of labor costs, etc. Okay. It'll be difficult for the Chinese, I think, to actually penetrate uh, the European market. Look how many uh, Japanese cars you see in Europe. Not well, not very but Tom, much. What about what about the U.S. though? Because we see tons of Japanese, sure. South Korean cars here. We don't have that yeah. same uh, love for our domestic champions here. That's a good point. Uh, but I do wonder if the Chinese OEMs wind up effectively replacing the Japanese. Oh, you can count on it. Toyota, of course, being the biggest and clearly the dumbest Japanese automotive manufacturer, hands down, no contest. <laughs> Shout out to my recent Patreon video. I mean, Toyota literally begging, begging, desperate to go bankrupt. A few other Japanese automotive manufacturers you might know by name, Suzuki, Mazda, Honda, Nissan, Mitsubishi, they're in big fucking trouble. So too, US automotive manufacturers, in particular, Government Motors. So Tom has a fair point. But I'm not sure he's quite grasping how dangerous it is for companies like General Motors and many under the Stellantis umbrella and even Ford in the United States. Tesla's eating their lunch. Tesla has superior, extremely profitable, very desirable vehicles. Well, guess what? There's plenty of great China-made electric vehicles already available in China soon to invade other countries. There is certainly some loyalty to national brands from country to country, but money talks. You get a very compelling, extremely affordable China-made electric vehicle or a steaming pile of excrement made by GM, not everybody's going to overpay for the pile of shite. Who aren't really being as aggressive on electrification. The Chinese are. Um, but at the end of the day, who are the main incumbents in the U.S.? Ford, GM, Stellantis. These are pickup trucks, SUV territory. That's not really where these Chinese uh, EVs are playing. Uh, they're coming in really at the smaller end, lower, uh, smaller battery size, uh, less battery range. Okay. In the U.S., you do need bigger battery range. We got wide expansive spaces, range anxiety and performance, especially is a requirement. Tom, I want to talk to you about charging, as a matter of fact. Obviously, Tesla stock, it really popped on that news that it, its charging would be used by Ford and GM. How do the EV Chinese makers fit into this story? And can Tesla actually benefit from these Chinese EV makers entering the U.S. market if they're willing to adopt or they may have to adopt Tesla's charger? Yeah, I mean, it's always good to be the standard, right? You want to be the standard on charging. Um, it may not necessarily be a big financial windfall for Tesla, but what it does do is show that their platform is the kind of winning platform. And Tom and I obviously on the same page in terms of supercharging, not moving the needle for Tesla. As I mentioned in my base case, 2030, give or take, supercharging profits from opening up the network to third party consumers, not just Tesla consumers, not even 1% of Tesla's 2030 profits. Connecting back to what we are talking about earlier about autonomy, this allows them, we think, to license software to other OEMs, including the Chinese OEMs. Uh, there's not that many players that are doing autonomy software. Look at FSD, how many miles are on the road, how much data they have, the advantage they right. have. It's so refreshing, although it's an indictment on the entire industry, but it is so refreshing to hear an analyst on Wall Street covering Tesla stock who recognizes Tesla's data lead when it comes to autonomy. I hate to say it, but Tom is leading the charge. Although this has been obvious for years, been discussing it since I started this channel and it was obvious before then too. So we look at charging as a way to kind of Trojan horse in the door and okay. sell FSD and software. So let me ask you, and we got to let you go after this. You said about 70% of your call on Tesla is because of robo taxis. How much of it is the charger story? 
We actually don't really include it in our uh, valuation of financials. It's just 70% robotaxi, 20% FSD, 10% cars. We just want it to be really simple and just look at those three items. And we're looking at like 2040, 2035 and discounting it back. The, 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 the opportunity is so massive for these things that we think this is enough to carry the story for this stock for several years to come. Love to hear it. Analyst on Wall Street modeling Tesla out about two decades into the future, starting to grasp the incredible impact of autonomy, dwarfing Tesla's automotive business, ignoring the supercharging network because it's literally a spec. In my Tesla valuation model, available exclusively on Patreon, link in the description, only available for investor supporters and above. When I first posted this, I had a bunch of exclusions, which included third-party supercharging. I'm like, why even include this? It's a spec. I've got a bunch of other exclusions in there as well. But I decided, you know what? I'm going to include the supercharging stuff just to show how little it actually matters. More context, ARK Invest don't model Tesla's energy business at all in their valuation model. Why? Because relative to autonomy, the software component is irrelevant. It doesn't mean it's not enormous. It's just relatively speaking, autonomy, robotaxis, dwarfs, everything else by orders of magnitude. Literally orders of magnitude. Tesla shares closing the day lower. Back to life, back to reality, back to back losses here. <laughs> After the EV giant saw 13 straight days of gains, look, it was a hot streak. Earlier this week, Bank of America analysts, though, they estimated that the U.S. electric vehicles market will drop to 18% by 2026. And that doesn't make sense. No one's that dumb. They must be talking about Tesla's US market share. Let me just double check. Yep, can confirm they were referring to Tesla's US market share, which is completely and utterly irrelevant. Why? What matters is how many electric vehicles is Tesla selling on planet Earth. That's the only thing that matters. Everything else is noise, irrelevant, and misleading. I've covered this a trillion times. Unless you're mathematically illiterate, to the point where you don't even know that one plus one equals two, you understand. The pie is getting larger. Tesla can keep selling more and more vehicles while the pie grows, lose market share in percentage terms as other companies start producing electric vehicles and still be selling record numbers of vehicles quarter after quarter after quarter after quarter, which is exactly what's going to happen. For more on the EV space, we welcome in Ross Gerber, Kawasaki Wealth Management, uh, Wealth Investment Management CEO. Ross, great to speak with you here today. You know, even as we kind of look at this win streak that Tesla has had, you have been one of the more vocal names around Tesla shares, whether it's you know, thinking that Elon Musk should give up the reins to somebody else or whether it's just how they're able to make sure that they're locking in margins for the longer term. You look at a win streak like we saw, net happy, net sad that it's that it's snapped. What's, what goes through your mind? Well, I'm certainly not sad when you own <laughs> 420,000 shares of Tesla that yeah. have it. You know, go up substantially and make my clients, you know, I don't know, $50 million, you know, pretty happy. So, you know, just to be clear, you know, I didn't want any change in Tesla's management. I want to change in Twitter's management, which is what we got. And by getting Elon back at Tesla and all the moves they've made just in the 30 days since Elon's really been refocused on Tesla with signing up the entire world to the Tesla charging infrastructure, for example, and having a very, very positive meetings in China. We just have seen full-fledged how Elon's focus makes such a huge difference in the results. And the stock market has responded and institutional investors have come back into the stock. And, and now we're back to the valuation that Tesla deserves. So, Ross, uh, Diane here, uh, with regard to both of you had been bullish on Tesla way before uh, the rest of the market has caught up. Are you, But previously you were pushing for a board seat. Are you happy with how Tesla is being run now? Well, I mean, pretty much everything I was pushing for, they've done. So, yeah, I'm thrilled. You know, once again, Tesla was never really against any of the ideas that I was presenting. It was really just Elon. And so I think there was just a a period of time that it took for several of these things to sort of percolate into his mind, into existence. And and now things are moving in very much the direction that I had hoped. I feel a lot more confident about the succession plan and management. Um, the changes in the board with J.B. Straubel, I was very much four. So I, I'm happy to have JB and Tom Zhu on the board, which really represent operational, you know, players for Tesla, but also just the investor day I thought was super illuminating, followed by a shareholder day that was also very illuminating to what what's happening with the company and their focus. So 
So when you look at Tesla as a whole, obviously there's many challenges they face over the next year. But you know, with Cybertruck launch imminent, and you know, the economy hopefully looking like we're through the worst of it, and and well, of the rate cycle hike. So hopefully we won't have a recession. And going into 2024, you have to be very bullish on EV makers like Tesla. You know what? I'm not going to say a word. We've we've heard some on the street call out and say that Tesla is now an AI play. Do you believe that to be true? And and has Tesla disclosed enough of how much it's willing to spend on artificial intelligence at this point for you? Well, it's really nice that everybody's into AI, but this has been going on for a long time. You know, AI development, NVIDIA is another top investment in my fund, GK, uh, along with Tesla is our top investment. And so it's been a really good year for us at GK. But, you know, when you look at Tesla, it is an AI company where its solution, it's not only an AI company, but its solution is autonomy or having cars drive themselves. So this is a much more difficult AI solution than, let's say, generative AI getting it to tell you, you know, how many, you know, stocks are in the S&P 500 or something, you know, which is 500. Mm -hmm. So, you know, it's, it's kind of like, the market's finally realizing the full value of the software that they've been developing for a long time that a lot of people have been saying is going to be incredibly valuable. Now I think the market's starting to say, hey, you know what? These cars do drive themselves and that could be awesome. Got to admit, it's pretty amusing to see this stock market finally starting to assign some value to AI. However, most of this energy and the financial capital is being misdirected in my opinion. There are companies today with practically zero employees but a great PowerPoint presentation raising insane amounts of capital because they plastered AI throughout their presentation. For years, the stock market has been entirely ignoring Tesla's incredible real world AI capabilities, and this remains largely unchanged. In essence, I don't really think the penny's quite dropped on Tesla's real world AI yet. Eventually it will, but we're not there yet. You'll know when we are, believe me. You mentioned the Cybertruck earlier, but that has been delay after delay. Uh, is, it, is it ever gonna come? Well, we don't look at Tesla timelines as delays. That would assume that the original date was actually real. So we look at Tesla when they set timelines as really goals. So they haven't achieved their goal in reaching production as quickly as we had hoped, but they're certainly reaching it now. So we're now at the beginning of can they make these in scale and how much pain will they go through making these in scale? And we'll see in the next probably three to six months how successful they'll be at, at scaling Cybertruck production. So we're hoping for the best. And I was just in Austin and they're employing incredible new technologies to build this truck. So it, it'll be quite a challenge. So it's great to have Elon back on the factory floor, really working at Tesla. I think it's going to take a lot longer than three to six months before we really know how successfully Tesla's able to ramp up Cybertruck production. Maybe 12? Time will tell. Let me know in the comments below, by the way, who is buying a Cybertruck? And if so, have you already reserved one? I'm approximately number 420,000 in the line. <laughs> not even joking. By the way, I'm still not over the shock of hearing a Wall Street analyst start talking about the fact that he's modeling Tesla out until about 2040 and acknowledging Tesla's data lead in terms of autonomy and how significant it will be to Tesla's future valuation. I shouldn't be so impressed. After all, this has been obvious to others for many years. But as we know, when it comes to Tesla at least, Wall Street stock analysts seem to be very, very, very late to the party. But as I say, Better late than never. Wonder how long until they start thinking about the implications of Tesla's humanoid robot. Athletic Greens AG1 has given me a massive, meaningful boost in energy, allowing me to do a lot more every day, including using my brain more and using my body more. I highly recommend you guys and girls check it out. Athletic Greens AG1 is an excellent way to fill in nutritional gaps. It's got 75 high-quality vitamins, minerals, and whole food source nutrients, plus prebiotics and probiotics and digestive enzymes and adaptogens to help you deal with stress. Plus, if you click the link in the pinned comment or head to drinkag1.com slash SMR, you can get yourself a one-year free supply of vitamin D3 and K2. But don't take my word for it. Here's what some of you guys and girls have to say. AG1 has changed my life. I was, as you described, treating myself like a circus, ate like trash, rarely exercised, used alcohol as a stress crutch, cannabis also. AG1 is what gave me the kick in the ass, got me back to the gym, motivated me to do more for myself, family, my business, etc. Keep doing what you do. Now, I know there's some skeptics, the same kind of people who think Elon Musk is a fraud reading this going, what do you thought? There's no way that's possible, bro. It must be a placebo effect. Believe it or not, this is a recurring theme. If you give your body everything it needs to feel and perform its best, including having a lot more energy, you'll need ways to use that energy. For me personally, that includes more exercise, moving my body more, more social activity, 
and more cognitively demanding tasks, including producing a fuck ton of exclusive content over on Twitter and on Patreon, plus my daily YouTube uploads. The proof's in the pudding. On to another testimonial from a viewer of this channel. SMR, you asked me to provide feedback on AG1. Here it is. It has helped with mental acuity, stamina, and intestinal waste management. <laughs> uh, can't read between the lines. It certainly helps with regularity and digestion. That's what the digestive enzymes are for. It has also dramatically reduced my cravings for sugar. You guys need to stop eating sugar. It's fucking poison. I'm 50, 5'9", and overweight, aka a fat motherfucker. I think that's a technical term for overweight, isn't it? Is it fat motherfucker or obese? I can't remember. I average 100 hours a week in the West Texas oil fields as a safety supervisor. Jesus Christ, dude. No wonder you're struggling to keep your weight under control. 100 hours a week. Brutal. It has helped me lose weight. It is not an appetite suppressant. It can help fat people suppress cravings and motivation to be healthier is critical for changing your diet. Love you, brother. Again, this is a great point. It's something people really don't seem to grasp. If you have more energy, everything becomes easier. It's like turning on easy mode for life. A few years ago, before I was taking AG1, my health was trash. I was struggling to get through the day, had afternoon fatigue. The last thing I wanted to do was either use my brain or move my body. Didn't have the energy. Now, my biggest struggle every day is figuring out ways to use that energy. I'm exercising way more, doing a lot more with my friends and family. And of course, my work output has increased substantially. And you can fact check me. Check out the average length of my videos I was posting to YouTube three years ago. Need I say more? And one final testimonial. Love this one. Okay, here's the deal for me with this AG1 shit. I'm 41 years old and not the type to eat, drink, smoke or sleep healthy, so I was skeptical. That being said, here's what I experienced. Day one, meh. Day two, afternoon fatigue was about 45 minutes late. Day three, zero afternoon fatigue. Day four, zero afternoon fatigue plus extra energy. Day five, again, zero afternoon fatigue plus energy, wondering, what the fuck, really? See, this is the thing, right? The results for many people are just almost too good to be true. This, this is the same experience I had. My afternoon fatigue just vanished out of nowhere. I'm like, wait, what the fuck? Why am I not tired in the afternoons anymore? Surely, it's not that AG1, is it? Turns out it was. Day six and seven, same thing. Day eight, same thing. Plus, I had the want to get things done around the house that I normally would slack off and not get done. Again, the point, extra energy, you'll need to use it, you'll find ways to use it. Day 9, 10, and 11, and today is day 12. I fucking love it. So however you managed to get me to buy it, I'm so glad you did. Thank you so much, SMR. It really changed me so far. Guys, this shit really works. Just try it. By the way, this is the reason I continue to relentlessly promote AG1. A lot of people get real fucking mad in the comments. Oh my god, Snake Oil Salmon sold out. Oh my god, he's a scammer. This is fraud. But constantly... I'm pretty sure everyone making these comments is also currently short Tesla stock. I'm not particularly concerned about people having a negative perception, those folks suffering from small brain syndrome, still living in my bum's basement syndrome, etc., writing mean comments, claiming AG1's a scam or it doesn't work. I mean, bro, when I get feedback like this, this is what keeps me going. And remember, there is a 90-day money-back guarantee. There's nothing to lose here. Just try this stuff for a month, and if you don't get these results, get your money back. See, it's a literal no-brainer. It's an IQ test at this point in time. Testimonial after testimonial after testimonial like this. Get your money back if it doesn't work. Just try it for a month and if it doesn't work, get your money back. Today's the day. It's finally time. Be like this guy who was a massive skeptic, but finally, after a thousand promotions in a row, caved in, tried AG1 and has results like this. Head to drinkag1.com slash SMR or click the link at the pinned comment and please let me know how you're feeling in a few weeks time. Now, if you'll excuse me, time to put my extra energy to good use. I'll be recording some more exclusive content for Patreon and my Twitter subscribers. So click the links in the pinned comment. See you over on Twitter and or Patreon. And don't forget to grab your AG1. Love ya.